And again, I just want to say thanks everybody for joining us today. It's going to really be a great workshop hosted by PS Digital out on Long Island, but serving the world. Yeah, coast to coast. <laughs> yep. Coast to coast. And the world, we have sure. Potential to serve the world. Definitely we're looking well, we're looking domestic right now, right? We have a few home. world we have a few worldwide accounts. Like a home oh. fragrance company that from oh, France. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maison Berger, we do. Wow, what a small world. Yeah. I know uh, I know someone who works uh, who's done um, contract work for them, audio contract work. That's great. All right, we've got about 15 plus of our guests joining us today in addition to us, the co-hosts. So I'm gonna get started, Emily, if you could just um, uh, woman the uh, waiting room admitting for me while I give a brief welcome uh, and a thanks to everyone again for joining us. My name is Sarah Benizio. I am pinch hitting for the Bronx Chamber of Commerce membership manager, Francisco. He would have loved to be with us today, but he has fallen ill. Not COVID, don't worry, we made sure of that. Um, I feel like we have to say it these days. Um, and I am uh, joined today by our folks from PS Digital, Brian Ladon and Emily Anelli. And they're gonna be presenting a really great lineup for you. I do wanna give a quick plug for PS Digital, not just as today's co-host and an, an expert in their own right in the field, but they are a Bronx Chamber member and they're also our vendor slash partner. They designed our gorgeous website, which you've probably visited, bronxchamber.org. And we're just really excited to partner with them to bring you uh, lots of tips and tricks today to optimize your online presence and get starting, get started or keep going wherever you are in your digital journey. So I'm gonna hush up now, but I wanted to say uh, thanks again to everybody and I'm gonna turn it over to you, Brian. Great, thank you, Sarah. Thanks so much. Thank you everyone for joining. We have one hour, so I'm gonna jump right into the workshop, okay? We're gonna discuss basically the five fundamentals of what every business should have with regards to their online presence. Uh, welcome once again. Um, the beautiful thing is that we do have as business owners as taking control of our online presence today, we have the, abil the ability to A, find what we're able to actually to control what they find, how they find you and where they find you. Very important. We're going to discuss those three items during this workshop. I'm Brian Ladani. I have a bunch of years of experience. We'll just move on. What to expect during the workshop? We encourage participation. Pre-pandemic, we did these workshops live and, and uh, with a big presentation screen behind me with a packed full audience. So it was lots of fun. So we've actually changed to... Uh, to accommodate where we are and we've taken Zoom and we do a lot of these virtual workshops, which is probably just as powerful. So what we do expect is a participation, please feel free. Um, put your business name in the chat box and I could use your business as an example if, if you want. Um, your business name and the website, if you have any questions, please feel free to chime in. I'll answer any questions as we go through this workshop. Um, before we begin, the biggest problem I find doing this as many years as I have, business owners always take a look at their online presence via the desktop. One thing you want to do is take a look at your online presence via the mobile device as well. So there's two types of searches that are going on on Google. The reason why we promote or the reason why we discuss Google so much is because that's where about 90, well, it says 88%, but really the number is around 90 to 91% of the U.S. population go to Google when performing a search. So that's why we discuss Google so much and we need to discuss Facebook as well. That's the social platform um, highest uh, percentage numbers. So Basically, there's two types of searches that are going on. People looking directly for you. That's what I would recommend you do. 
Take a look at your business name. Do you like what you see? Is it a powerful first impression? For example, I'm going to use PS Digital. I'm going to use a bunch of other examples during the workshop, but this is, if I just type in PS Digital, this is our first impression someone's going to get of us is this Google map listing on the right hand side. 84 reviews, five star, there's the website. We scroll down, oh, there's more reviews here. There's a description. So do yourself a favor and take a look at what you look like. How many reviews do you have on your map listing? Is it, does it reflect the business that you offer or the services that you provide? The second biggest thing is people not looking for you directly, but looking for your service. So we're going to get into how to optimize your Google map listing for when people are looking for your service locally, that you're able to be found. I'm moving right along. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to discuss the five pillars to the foundation. Number one is your logo, the importance of it. Number two is your Google My Business page, otherwise known as your GMB, your Google Map listing. It is free from Google. It's something to take advantage of, especially for those brick and mortar places. You can, I'll show you some of the, our, some results of some local pizzerias, some local contractors, dumpster companies in Brooklyn that get lots and lots of phone calls on the Google map listing. Reviews, the importance of reviews, how to generate reviews, how to reply to reviews, why they're important. Website, is it mobile friendly? Is it convertible? Is it converting traffic that you're driving to your website? Is it converting them to phone calls, to form fills, to purchases? to however you want them to communicate, whether it's a text message. And Google, which is definitely one of my favorites. How do you utilize Google, such as Google Ads? And there's also another product, probably two, oh geez, two and a half, maybe even three years old now. Three years new is uh, Google Local Services. Local Service Ads, it's more of a Google guarantee for the home service industry. Um, Remember to ask any questions in the chat box. Uh, we have Emily on standby, Sarah as well, so feel free. Logo, not gonna spend too much time on your logo. Everyone probably has a logo, which is great. A couple of, there's a bunch of logos here. The seven reasons why your logo is important. Number one, you want it to grab people's attention. You wanna create a powerful first impression you should definitely love your logo where you want to put it on your website. You want to put it on your social platforms. It's the foundation of your brand identity. That's where everything comes from. The color scheme, the look and feel of your website, your vehicle wraps, your business cards, your letterhead, your invoices. It separates you from your competition. Uh, brand loyalty. It becomes memorable. Um, it is expected. It's like a website. A logo is expected. That's where everything comes from. What you want to do with your logo, you want to brand it across, you know, keeping this online, you want to brand it across many platforms such as Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Instagram. So, you know, there is certain requirements, size requirements that Facebook's profile picture has, their cover photo, LinkedIn as well. So if you have a very, if you have a horizontal logo that you love, such as high kick Taekwondo, you may want to tap someone on the shoulder, a graphic um, a logo um, or graphic designer to not recreate your logo, but to kind of restructure it more of a stack method. Like what we did with high kick Taekwondo is it's very mm -hmm. horizontal. It does not fit into the profile pictures here on Facebook. So you could see the same look and feel, the same color. It was very thoughtful, but we had to take that horizontal and make it circle to make it fit into the profile pictures of Google, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. If you need any help with that, just let us know. That's fine. <clears throat> if you have any questions about your logo or branding, feel free. If not, we're going to move on to your Google My Business, your map listing. This is what it looks like. I think I showed you a live example earlier. 
It's when people are looking directly for you. So once again, perform that exercise, look directly for yourself, your own business and see how many reviews you have. Are you happy with it? Google My Business, this is best practice. I think that, well, there's 13 of them here. Number one, you want to claim your Google Map listing. Everyone on this workshop is going to get a complimentary Google My Business optimization package. Um, we'll address that at the end, which is fine. A couple of things you want to make sure you're the primary owner of this product. Maybe you had a friend create it. Maybe another agency created it. You don't want to let anyone hold you hostage to your Google My Business page. I'll show you the power, for example, I'll show you the power of it. Um, La Mia's Pizzeria, they are in Bayport, they're in Suffolk County. But just to give you a little sense, if we go to Insights, the power of this is in one month's time, They've received 354 phone calls. Granted, they're a pizzeria, they're brick and mortar, but still, this just goes to show you how many people are actually looking for them and gathering this information on the map listing. 354 people called them, 78 people requested direction, 302 people went to the website. So it is very powerful. It's something to take very seriously because the foe, I always tell people, ah, that's reviews, I'll, I'll, give you my review slogan when we get to that section. You want to collect and respond to reviews on this map listing. Mm -hmm. You want to reply to the positive and the negative reviews. You want to complete every section of this. And what I mean by the sections, this is the, the back end or the dashboard of your Google My Business page. This here is the users section. You'll see Jonathan Lamia is the primary owner. We are just managers of this page, but always the business owner, you want to be, make sure your ownership there. The info section, you want to complete the address. If you're a home-based business, which we represent probably 85% of our businesses, home-based businesses, the service industry, they don't want to promote their address and Google understands that. You would have to, in order to verify your Google My Business, you're going to need to enter an address to receive the postcard from Google to get your business verified. Um, takes five days to receive that postcard, but you don't have to show your address. You could just easily clear address here and poof, it's gone. It even says it here, let customers see your business location on Google by adding. You can leave this empty if you don't have a location, such as a storefront or office. Um, this, is a, this is a food, this is a pizzeria, so menu food or insights we just reviewed. Reviews are here. So you generate a review, you could reply to reviews here as well. The ones you've replied to, the ones you haven't. Frank, he, he handles this himself. That's the owner, Frank. He replies to every review, which is awesome. I mean, what it looks like, just to show you, let me, if I'm looking for let me, this Pizzeria, I mean, they have a powerful first impression, the 4.6 with 141 reviews. If I click this reviews, I wrote a review, of course. Heck yeah, they were good, good pizza. Um, he responds and you could see how the owner responds to these reviews. It's great getting reviews, but there's something about when you look at reviews and you're reading other people's experiences and the business owner is actually replying to them. Um, it, it lets that person, that end user know, wow, this owner is very in tune with his online marketing. He's very up to speed. He's very on point. If you do leave a, a review, um, you want to be thorough with it. You want to be detailed. You want to provide as much information as you can about your experience with that company. Whether it was, whether it was on the workshop, whether it was the Bronx Chamber helping you establish your business or getting you the information you may need. So be thorough and thoughtful when you write reviews for other businesses because you would want the same. What else do we got here? Let me just move this dashboard over. Be meticulous with the contact information, your name, your address, your phone number, your website. There's primary and secondary categories. This is over here. And this, for example, is a primary pizzeria. You'll see it right here. Primary is pizzeria, restaurant, 
Secondary's Italian restaurant. You could add up to 10 of these, but keep in mind the primary is gonna be the one that's showed on the platform. Okay. Hey Brian, I have a quick question. Is sure. this, so is filling out all of this information, like one to 13 here, does that boost SEO? So are your odds of being, of coming up higher in the search um, better if all of these are filled out? Does Google like you better if you do one to 13? Oh, big time. Basically it's for, that's a great question, Sarah, and great point. When you do optimize your Google My Business page, when the people that are searching for your service in that area, for example, I, I don't know who I'm looking for, but I'm looking for a pizzeria and I live in Bayport. So let's just take a quick peek and then we'll show, I'll, I'll show you how it, pizzeria in Bayport. So over here is the Google My Business map listings. They look different. They're not on the right-hand side because we're not looking directly for a business. We're looking for a product or service. So they appear in the map listing. This is what they are. So to Sarah's point, does it help you appear higher up? Yes, it does. There's a three pack underneath the map listing. It used to be the seven pack many, many years ago, and they've consolidated just the three. So they do optimize their Google My Business page and they show up number one. It's completely free, unlimited clicks, um, have at it. That's, that's beautiful for them. And it just shows a check mark because we manage this uh, profile. So it's something you definitely want to. You will find yourself appearing higher up in searches when people are looking for your service or product. Um, Markov applicable attributes. There are options available. You'll see that there's a from, from the business description. I mean, all this is kind of right here. The business description is down here. You're up to 750 characters. You know, he didn't add the opening date. We should, um, to Sarah's point, this is one field that is missing. I think he did open two, three years ago. <clears throat> We could actually, what's three years ago? What, uh, 2019? Feels so like we, a lifetime ago. <clears throat> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. It, it was March, and the day doesn't really matter. We'll put that. That's fine. All right, it's under review. That's, that's typical. The, you want to post, and another optimization that you can do with this Google Map listing is when you post, you could add a link to your website, which is going to optimize your website. Not only will your map listing show higher in that three pack, but you're also your website will serve up higher because all about backlinks and optimization. It's, it's really kind of self optimizing your website completely for free. <clears throat> what you want to do is on a post. For example, they just put June 4th, 2020. If I want to add an update, I'll go here. I'll add a photo, maybe a video, maybe a photo. I'll write the post. Hey, welcome, whatever. And I want to add my website here. This is going to optimize your website because the more links, outbound links your website has, slowly boosts your website. So you could do this once a week, create a post. Is anyone going to see the post? For example, here we are, we post, of course, at least we post a lot. This is what the posts look like on the map listing. Is anyone gonna like scroll down and be like, oh, let me see their post. It's not like Facebook, for example, it's a news feed. It's more of a scrolling from left to right, but something, <clears throat> but something you want to do because Google's going to appreciate that. Their, their spiders are going to, the algorithm's going to capture all that data that, wow, psdigitalli.com is posting on their Google My Business page. It'll, all these little things do add up and they help significantly. And it's completely free. So that's, a lot of people do call now. I would argue, <clears throat> learn more, Bun. I would argue to put your website here instead of your telephone number. If you have a sign up, if you have a, where's the offer? Offers are here. You can put that. There should be a link for your website as well or to redeem that offer, which would be your website. That's the posting. <clears throat> um, upload photos. I mean, 
I'll put photos and videos, yes. That's easy enough. Answer questions as they come in. If you have any unanswered questions, make sure you get to that. Add products or services. This way, when they look at your Google My Business page on the mobile device, there is a list if they click a button that says services, all of your services will appear. For example, I'll use um, containers, uh, DB containers uh, there in Brooklyn. Uh, if I go to their products, we fill out their products. They have the, fifth, the 10, the 15, 20. So if you actually see it on Google, this is what it looks like. And the products are here with their telephone number. It looks like here. It's just very, how do you say, very, it's a very robust Google map listing completed thoroughly. And it's going to help every, they do the call now button, which is fine, but I you know, prefer to learn more. And that's the services and product section. Mobile only, set up messaging. This is, this is something, <laughs> in order to receive, um, this is what it looks like. So if I go to, there's a request a quote button here. Nowadays, people are gonna visit your website. They're gonna either call you. If it's after hours, at 8 p.m., 9 p.m., we're available, but some people feel like they wanna just fill out a request a quote form. They feel uncomfortable calling at that hour, which is fine. But give them that option. There's a message feature that came out probably a year and a half ago that you have to turn on. If I were to write a message to ourselves, you would get a notification on your mobile phone and you could respond accordingly. The only way you're going to receive that notification via this message platform, whether it's on a desktop or a mobile device, is if you download the Google My Business app. If you have an Android, go to your Go to your Google Play. If you have the uh, iPhone, go to the App Store, download Google My Business, sign on to your Google account, and this way you could receive the notifications for when people write you. It's a message slash text, if you will, but it's via their platform. We, we get probably, I don't know, Emily, two, three requests a month on this alone. So... Giving your consumers or potential customers many different options are only going to, you know, help you grow. Uh, Brian, can you also like respond to reviews using that same app and all of that? Like, is that that's a good one-stop shop so that you can just be as responsive as possible, right? Because uh, you know, sometimes somebody hits you with a bad review and you want to get on, you know, you like want to get on top of it, right? Yes, exactly. So that, so when downloading that Google My Business app on your iPhone or Android, you'll have access to this entire dashboard. It's going to look different. It's going to be on a mobile device, of course. I, I, I prefer doing everything on the desktop, more real estate. It's bigger. It's just more functionality. But yes, you can reply to reviews on your mobile device once you um, sign into your Google My Business page and have access to it. Yes. You can respond to messages, reviews. You could look at your insights. You could update your information. You could actually post. You could add photos. You could add videos. Some people, a lot of our clients only use their mobile phone um, and they love it. But I kind of just grew up with the desktop in a weird way. So I feel more comfortable with the bigger screen. I can, I can hang out with the mobile phone all day long, but I prefer to do it on the desktop. But yes, you, you can have these um, the same... 90% of the functionality you can do on the mobile device, downloading that app as you can on the desktop. Maintain your business profile. You want to stay on top of it. There's a, there's a chef, Chris Lavecchia, who just actually last night, I reached out to him because his he does very well. Um, if we look for Chef Chris, his telephone number is no, we don't have access to his Google My Business page. But all of a sudden, I'm looking at his map list, and I'm like, "Chris, where's your telephone number?" And you know, so you always, and it's still not there. He updated it last night, Sarah, on his on his mobile phone on the Google My Business, and it's still maybe under review. I don't know. We don't have access to it, so um, it's a good point. No matter, he's had this map list since like Yelp years. has it. <laughs> what? Looks like Yelp has it. Where uh, is Yelp? It's from your screen. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, over here you're talking about, okay. So, 
So that's the, um, yeah, you want to stay on top of it, make sure it's still, everything's there. For what reason? I don't know why his telephone is not there. I don't know. There's another section, the COVID-19 update on your, on the info section. Actually, it's on the home section if you want, if you just click your home and you have any updates regarding COVID, temperature check, masks that must be worn, whatever the case may be, updated accordingly. And that's your Google My Business page in a nutshell. Um, you want to optimize it. <clears throat> if you're a home-based business, you could do very well with it. Um, we, get, we get lots of business that come in through our map listing when people are searching for a product or service and they just, they either message, they either phone call, they visit the website. And more importantly than people communicating with you, but it's that first impression when you're at a, when you're, when you're at a gala or you're at a, um, a, a party or something and you're getting recommendations of, yeah, you gotta go see Chef Chris Lavecchia. The first thing people are gonna type in, they're gonna vet the kitchen remodeler. They're gonna vet the bathroom remodeler because one second. Bear, bear with me. Okay, thanks. We just have a little, couple of little dogs in the background there. But the reason you want to have that powerful first impression because you're going to get vetted. The higher ticket items you sell or offer, people are going to do their due diligence. So make sure you look the way you want or the way you um, the, look the way you offer your services. Do you have any questions on the Google My Business before we get into reviews? Okay, nothing to work. Good, we'll move on. If you have any questions, we can always backtrack reviews. <clears throat> um, Third-party review sites such as Yelp, for example, we saw Chris Lavecchia. You want to uh, make sure these are on point because on the left-hand side on the organic section, they're going to show up. So just make sure you look at the left section as well and you like what you see here. Um, PS Digital, what do we look like here? There's no review third-party sites there. And those third-party platforms are such as Yelp, Facebook will even show up, Angie's List, Home Advisor. <clears throat> this is lots of stats here, but basically we're gonna break it down into four sections. You wanna build trust. I'm not gonna go over every bullet point. I'm just gonna pick out the ones that are highlighted. Um, I think those are the most important. 87% um, of people, um, they say that a business needs four to five before they start using them. So here's my slogan that if you could always, you could always count the amount of referrals you do get, but you can't count the ones you're not getting. The ones you're not getting may be because you have a two-star average on your Google page, maybe your Yelp page, maybe it's a three-star. If you're under four, you want to address it immediately. Um, and I'll get into how to generate more reviews as well, but definitely anything under four, I would, that's the first thing I would do is attack it tonight, attack it tomorrow, and I'll show you how to attack it. Um, you, when, when you ask for reviews, you want to ask when your customer's happiest. That's, that's just common sense, right? If you're just yelling at each other, that's not probably a good time. Um, you, you, like we're in the service industry, so we'll wait until like a website is up and we're doing continual service. We'll ask them maybe three or four months after just to write a, their experience so they could share their experience with others. Um, responding to positive reviews are, is very fun. Um, be very thoughtful, be very thorough with your response, just as thorough as they were when they were writing the review. You can actually even say it was a pleasure, Tony, working with you and designing your website and creating your Google Ads campaign. Those keywords, believe it or not, are going to optimize your campaign because those are just triggers that Google's going to see that's on your Google My Business platform when responding to reviews. So kind of throw that in there. If you forget, you could always edit your reviews as well. You could always go back. Um, how to respond to negative reviews. I always say, you know, take the night, sleep on it. Don't, don't, don't just read it and respond the way you want because keep in mind, people are gonna read that reply to that negative review. So think about it at night, take some time, try to contact that person because I've done this plenty of times. 
for our clients, if they do get a negative review, we could track that person down, contact him, resolve the issue, or if we even have the information, we could call them directly and say, hey, what was your bad experience? Can we address it? Can we fix it? We fix it, they go back in, edit their two-star review to a four or five-star review. Do I do that a lot. You could, you know, just there it is, invite the user to discuss offline. Um, five ways to get more reviews. Number one is there's a couple, here, I'll just throw them all down. There's five. The best way to get more reviews, everyone here, if you're in networking events or, or, or networking groups, chambers, associations, the, if you have two reviews and you want to just get to 20 really quick, get reviews from not only your customers, but also the people you associate with, your colleagues, um, your vendors, you know, but have honest reviews as well. Mention that, you know, hey, I like if I was uh, giving <clears throat> like the Bronx Chamber a review, I know the Bronx, I, I know the folks over there, Sarah, Dolores, they're great. They help small businesses. They're a huge resource. They're entrenched in the community. Like I'm not gonna say, oh, I use them for this fake business of mine, you know, just be honest with the review. Automate review follow-ups, uh, add review link. You know, I'll show you a few examples of a review link on websites like, um, so the strength of this, Brian, is really to be selective in who you solicit reviews from, because you're not going to be able to control who leaves you reviews. But if you are, if you are reaching out to procure them amongst your own network, you want to be choosy, right? Uh, you don't want to necessarily uh, put it out for the whole world, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, of course, definitely. Like those associate, yeah. I mean, I've been to plenty of different networking groups and. There's like 20 people, 20 business owners that meet every Tuesday at like Latip, for example, and they're, they're best of buddies. They have breakfast every Tuesday at 7 a.m. They know each other. They know they show up on time. They know they're professional. Yeah, those people, yeah, have at it. They obviously are going to write a five-star review, but be, be selective and use your best judgment. You can email a blast to your current customers. As well, you could place a badge on your website. For example, Anthony's Reglazing something you can do to drive traffic. Anthony's reglazing. I'll just show you this one here. So we'll put a review link right here. So if I click this, it's basically gonna go right there, pop up and I could boom, write a five star, good value, whatever, boom, 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 type away, add a photo. That's what you should be doing. You should be very thoughtful on this, on this when writing reviews and even add a photo if you can, let me hit yes. So that, these are the buttons you can put at the top and also too, you can put at the bottom of the page here, review us on Google. There's some other third party websites um, that you, widgets, excuse me, we just did uh, TurboChill, for example. TurboChill, they only have two reviews. They moved from Freeport to Bethpage and recently, if I just click their website, this is a third party and this, Sarah, definitely helps. If I click leave a review here, and they send this out to a lot of people. If that person had a negative experience with TurboChill, they're going to hit not, probably not. And it's going to not take them to Google or Facebook, but it's going to take them to a form fill where they could vet their frustration. They could vet their bad experience to the business owner. And it circumvents the Google and Facebook so they don't write that review there. Now, if I had a great experience, I hit thumbs up, it takes me to Google. And if I click the Google link, it's going to take me, you know, where it's going to take me right here. Poof. So that's a, that's a reputation management system that you can implement. It's if there's uh, that's actually a system we have. And what it looks like too on their page is pretty cool. It actually has a running slide of all of their reviews. Granted, they only have two and they just started this campaign a week ago, but um, they're well underway. So let me get out of there, get out of here. Anthony's are glazing. All right. Incentivize your team. Sure, if you're in the service industry and you have um, maybe a pool company where you have technicians, electricians going out where you as a business owner don't engage with your clients, um, 
you know, put out a raffle once a week. Whoever comes back with the most reviews gets a gift card or something. Incentivize your employees that interact with your customers to get the review on the spot. It's easier said than done. Oh, you can sit there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get 80 reviews. We have like 80. It, it's tough getting reviews. It's not easy. It's a lot of work. It's, it's a continual grind week after week getting these reviews. But the payoff is tremendous. The blood and sweat and tears that go into each one of your reviews will pay off you coming up on that map listing, pay up on your website, being a little served up on, that, on the organic side. Just the people, you have 200 reviews and your competition has 10. Without a doubt, they're going with the 200 reviews. And I think this is the last slide for reviews. One thing I believe, and it would be open for discussion, but I feel that a 4.9 is better than a 5.0. And the reason I say that is, if you have some guy with or some company that has 800 reviews with a five-star average, a thousand reviews, it kind of seems a little bit, what a 4.9 or 4.8? Don't be discouraged if you do get a 4.9 because that just lets people know, yeah, I'm human. You know, yeah, out of 600, we have a 4.9, which is more realistic. So it's just a little, you know, it, so don't be discouraged if you do have a 4.8 or 4.9, because I think you're in great, great shape. Uh, what else we got here? My little thing is, okay. Any questions? I know we have 23 minutes, and we're going to jump into your website and Google ads. Is there any questions on the reviews? There was a good one in the chat from uh, Mr. Mason that I think you should address, Brian. It's a really good one um, because I, you know, in my past lives, you know, working elsewhere, I've definitely brushed up against this um, about incentivizing customers and clients to leave reviews and how, you know, you want to be really, I think you want to be really careful with that, right? Just as far as like a, you know, ethics are concerned, right? In terms of uh, offering something in exchange for review. Could you address that? I think it's important for everybody to hear. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I see the 20% off your next order if you leave a review. It is, use your best discretion. Um, we just position it. <clears throat> we, don't, we don't offer anything. I wouldn't go that route just because, like Sarah said, ethics. But I always like to say if you can, just share your experience on the Google platform so others could read about it. But um, you know, if you're like a, if you're a coffee donut place or a pizzeria and yeah, it, it's a, it's a fine line. Um, just use your best discretion. I, you know, it, it just, that, that's all I could say about that, but I wouldn't offer anything. I would go the, go the ethical route and just, you know, kind of keep, there's campaigns you could do a drip campaign where they get a reminder after three days if they don't write the review the first day, then after seven days, they get another reminder. So go that route and you'll be just fine. That's the route we take. 20% um, off your next order if you leave a review. Is, is, it, is it, it or not worth it in the case if they leave negative? <clears throat> Yeah, we'll just, you know, keep, just keep asking the people you had good experiences with. Use your best judgment on that. I don't know. Did I answer that? Am I kind of dodging it a little bit? No. But it is a gray area, right? It, I mean, I don't, I don't think that anyone is necessarily going to come after you from the ethics police if you do so. But I think like the general best practices that I understood, you know, when I was uh, in a more service facing industry where we were getting lots of reviews from from customers and, and patients um, is definitely that um, actively soliciting and putting that in writing probably isn't a good look, right? Like, so maybe it, it's, it's, if it's, if it's accessible and visible that you are offering something in exchange for a positive review, that would probably be frowned upon, I guess, uh, by anyone who was looking you, for you a reason. Right. <laughs> I mean, you could you could get away with it. I know. I know when I make a purchase, I get an email on some. I can't tell you the product. I completely forget. 
but leave a leave a leave a positive review for twenty dollars off your next order. Um, it is a great line. We could talk about it offline if you want, but there are big companies that do it. Um, is anyone going to come after you and take down the review? No, not at all. Um, that's not the case. You can dispute some, just switching the gear on some negative reviews. If you get a review that's not yours, like if you do roofing and someone writes that you have horrible pizza, you could get that review taken down by contacting Google and saying this is completely irrelevant. But there is a great line there. Hopefully, um, you don't have to resort to that, but use your best judgment. Um, your website. So the beautiful thing with your website is you have complete control over it. You want to make it convertible. It's one thing to have the, uh, <clears throat> you want to actually be descriptive on what you do, how you do it, what separates you from your competition, have those promotions and offers on your website. But more importantly, beautiful website is fine and dandy. But if it's not converting, if you're driving traffic, if you're spending investment dollars on Facebook, on Google, and you're taking people to the, your nucleus of your business, which is the website, which is formed based off your logo, the look and feel, it all kind of connects. You want to make it something that converts. When it, what we mean by convertible, it converts clicks to phone calls, converts clicks to form fills, to text messages, to purchases, to filling them, um, to being on your newsletter to capturing their email addresses, whatever you want that conversion to be for your goals, that's what the, the goal of the website is. So the first thing I would say is the mobile responsive right there. <clears throat> Take a look at what you look like on the mobile device. I'm telling you, I don't know how many people, how many business owners we talk to, they've never seen their website on their mobile device. They don't have the time. They never thought to look at it. And it's like, it's, oh my Lord, it's horrible. So take a look at what your website looks like on a mobile device. Cause I would say based on my experience doing Google ads and gathering the data, depending on the business you're in, anywhere from minimum 60 to at least 80% of people are finding you on the mobile device. And that number all is only going to increase as the years go by. Make it educational content. You wanna be the, the, um, the go-to, the guide. Um, you want to give those, um, you know, if you're a chimney company, you want to be the person that, you know, explains why it's important to winterize or summarize your chimney. So be very informational and educational. Service area is a huge, like the chef, we represent a few chefs and they don't really go to Jersey, but they will for a certain service fee. But if you really just target the Bronx, maybe the Queens, Manhattan, maybe the five boroughs, do a map and illustrate that on the contact page, even on the home page, proudly serving the five boroughs for over five or for over 30 years. Because if you don't have the service area and I'm looking at your website, I'm looking for a dumpster, I'm looking for an electrician, does he service? I don't really know. I'm just going to move on. Um, number four, fast path to CTA, call to actions. People are, people are lazy. People want things at their fingertips. I fall victim. I'm in my driveway. I'm going to an appointment. I'm looking for ABC plumbing. I got to, I'm going to, let me just piece, I hit the, I want to just touch one button directions and poof, I just wanted to take, you know, make a left or whatever, or just show me the map to get there. My point is people are impatient. People want things at their fingertips. So give it to them. You know, we're in a post, I mean, during or even post pandemic, people's habits have changed from what? I don't even know, to where are we, 2021, from 2019 to today. Habits have changed. More people are connected. More people on their mobile. More people want convenience. You'll see a lot more businesses providing in-home services. So make it easy for people to contact you. A click to call, a click for directions, a click to text, potentially. Um, a click to write a review. So make it, those call to actions, eat fast path. That's the fast path is just to click. Availability and scheduling. Um, 
There's all these third-party widgets you could implement on your website, like Calendly to schedule a court, to schedule um, meetings, um, consultations, build trust. It's something your website will do inherently as long as you have the amount of years of experience, all the different badges, um, the reviews from third parties. Reviews from third party. What the heck? Reviews from... Just basically, just what we do is when you have a testimonial section, you could just take those reviews, just kind of copy it and just put it on a testimonial page on your website. So that's going to build that credibility. Strong visuals, pictures, say it all if you're, depending on the business you're in, the pizzeria will do tons of pizza, the roofing will do before and afters, reglazing, I think you saw Anthony's reglazing, there was a, there was a before and after. Um, Photos. So these are visuals. <clears throat> Anthony's were glazing. They have location. They have 20 reviews of 4.4. They should work on this. I think a 4.8 would be better for them. But let's just take a look at their website. Fine. These are the pictures. These are the before and afters. So these visuals, <clears throat> you know, stuff like that. Videos are huge. I think there's another section here. Uh, promotional videos, sure. Um, nowadays, I think the uh, the iPhones or the Androids have more pixels than we grew up with our cameras. So use your device to create videos. Um, nothing's better than a video of one of your workers opening up a swimming pool. They get to see the branding of your van or of your truck, your employee working. It's more of a more of a non-generic. So those are things you might want to work on. Are you qualified? Sure, fully licensed and insured, over X amount of years of experience. You're part of a PHCC membership. You're part of the Bronx Chamber. Specials and coupons are probably the most important thing, especially on the homepage. If you have any specials or coupons, that's what's gonna push people over. Why should they choose you over your competition? I'm not saying you have to give anything up. Not saying you have to. Well, we actually well, we we give we give things we give too much away. But anyway, uh, just the promotion and the coupons really are going to. Everyone's looking for a deal. If you have a deal to offer, definitely promote it loud and upfront on the homepage. There's online chats you could do. We have a we have we have a bunch. Just make sure when someone is communicating via that platform that you're able to respond quickly. Great user experience, just make it user-friendly. Don't confuse, don't get like all smart and you confuse, you lose. If you have to make people think too long or burn calories, you're gonna lose them and they're gonna move on. They just, I'm looking for my roof to get done. You've been around for 30 years, you service Suffolk County, that's where I am. Um, you have, you have some great photos of what you do. I see your trucks. You have a 4.8 review in the book. Done. So strong professional design. I was on, um, I was on, where was I? I was looking on Facebook and I found a web designer and all of their websites, like that strong professional, the design was there, but I couldn't read the content. It was all like a gray gradient where it was just, I couldn't read anything and I'm on my mobile device. So I'm like, these websites are just the well thought out, the well designed, but I can't read anything. So make sure it's strong, legible and professionally built. Not, not from a web designer's point of view, but from a consumer's end where they're looking at the website. And I'm telling you, the business owner probably didn't even look at their mobile website. And that's why it's probably still live like that now. Ongoing updates and maintenance. I think that speaks for itself. We have about 10 minutes left. I'm gonna, websites, any questions on convertible mobile optimized websites? Google ads, which is my favorite. <clears throat> yeah, without even looking at the slides, just uh, what Google ads is, your Google My Business will help you promote yourself locally. If you get it's free and it's going to serve a purpose, a very big purpose. But when you want to target outside of your local one town or one borough and you want to target maybe Queens, Staten Island, Manhattan, 
or even Nassau County, you're going to want to do Google ads. Someone's looking for your product or service outside of your local area, your hyper-local area, looking for a roofer in Nassau, a Google ad section will show up. Basically, Google ads is going to take people when they click your ad. It's pay-per-click. It's a performance model. If I'm looking for a roofer in, let me just look for a roofer in Nassau County. So here's your Google. We'll get into your Google guarantee on the next couple of slides, but here's what your Google ads look like. So if we were to click one of these ads, it's going to cost that roofer X amount of dollars. Me as a consumer, <clears throat> I'm going to wind up on his website. Him as an advertiser better make sure that website converts me from a click to a phone call, to a form fill, to a text message, to something. Otherwise, you know, he's wasting money here. So that's the sequence. I'm a consumer. I need a roof. I go to Google because I have intent. I'm, I have a problem. I'm looking for someone to solve my problem. Roofer is near me. Roofers in Nassau, roofers in Suffolk, roofers in Bronx. Um, let's do roofers in the Bronx. Roofers. So here's your roofers in the Bronx. Um, there'll be other Google ads at the bottom of the page. So basically what happens is I have a problem. I go to Google, search it. There goes my solutions. I pick the best ad. I click it. I'm not going to click on the, any I'm not going to click on any ads now, but it'll drive me to their website. The website's job is to be relevant to the ad. You know, everything is all about relevancy. <clears throat> if you're promoting an offer on your Google ads, you want to promote that same offer on your website, that relevancy and that consistency. Uh, let's get back. To, let me get it back on point here. This, what is this? Google appears, users, <clears throat> Google search. There's millions and millions of searches every day. It's just, and it's probably angry. It's, it's not good. It's not going anywhere. I would say this too, just about Google. Um, it's not going anywhere. Um, embrace it. If you're not on it, you're missing out. Um, if your ducks aren't in a row, now is the time to do it. Time's ticking. Nothing's, the only thing that's going to change is your competition is going to just keep getting ahead of you. So take a look at your online presence today. Do the Google My Business. Optimize, we'll help you optimize it, of course. We'll optimize it the best possible way. Then it's your job to get those reviews and posts and take a look at your website. Get all that in order because when you do Google ads, the biggest mistake people make is when they have horrible website and they're spending one, two, five, ten thousand dollars a month on Google Ads driving traffic to a non-convertible website. I mean, just talk about a waste of money. It's not converting. Yeah, they're fine. They're getting a few leads here and there, but maybe they're not getting the maximum maximum amount of leads, the efficiency they can be getting with the proper logo, the Google map listing, with the reviews, with a convertible website. So it all kind of ties in and it's going to allow you, when you do advanced marketing, search engine optimization, maybe an email campaign or text message campaign or a social campaign, it's all going to tie in. And what we're discussing today is these five fundamentals. Basically, the four Google ads would be your fifth. But those four fundamentals, once you get that foundation solid, it's going to just enhance your overall advertising budget no matter what you do and google ads is going to be a big part of it it's one thing to have a website but if no one's finding your website <clears throat> there's a problem you can use the billboard analogy but here's here's what a google my here's what a search engine results page looks like the google local lsa is local service ads it's a paper call model there's only certain select industries that Google allows to participate in on this platform, the home service related industries. Every industry is different. Electric, they have tree service, they have cleaning, they have plumbers, they have HVAC. Every price per call based on the industry is different. So if you're one of those home service and there's a list of them, I think we have a list here somewhere. 
This is the list of local services that you can do with the Google guarantee pay per call model. If you're not, eh, this is what it is. Maybe you'll, you'll get there eventually or Google will um, allow your business eventually, but you know, that's up to them. They appear at the top of the page, the Google guarantee here. You go through a little bit of a vetting process to make sure you're licensed and insured. You are who you say you are and you're, <laughs> And by the way, if you are, if you do fall under that service industry where you are allowed to do Google local service ads, make sure you have tons of reviews because that's how you're going to get that top placement on this platform. I'm telling you, it's all, and this guy's a 3.4. See, he, this guy, Joseph Weinstein, yeah, he has probably, I don't know. I mean, 4.7 New York Electrical, 4.5 Duffy. He's not getting a lot of eyeballs or a lot of clicks here. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> Think about what you do in your daily functions when you're looking for um, services or products, how you perceive perception is reality. So how you perceive those um, reviews and what, what, how it affects your decisions. Here goes your pay-per-click ads. It's above the map listing. Here goes your Google My Business map listings. It's a three-pack. used to be the seven-pack. And here goes your organic. So Google ads is right here. It's usually at the top, it's at the top or the bottom of the page, pay-per-click. I mean, Google Ads, we could talk about forever. Um, we have about three minutes remaining. I know everyone's time is valuable. It's, I think this thing, went, this, this workshop went from five to six. So um, is there any questions about Google Ads? Okay. I think we have a great, um, you know, crop of small and micro businesses that the chamber works with through our member network and also our small business resource network. And I believe the majority of folks who have taken time out of their schedules to join us today reflect those groups. And I think it's an important takeaway for everyone to understand like the, the, the sum total of all of this is, you know, it, as you said, sort of it's chicken and the egg thing, a lot of things fit together, but it's a really good step to make sure that your Google My Business page is taken care of, right? As far as making sure your, you know, your calls to action are clear that they, people can get in touch with you, submit a contact form, call you and have those basics while maybe you are setting up the other digital footprint pieces such as your website, right? Yes, they all fit together, but we can't do everything at once, right? We can get a little paralyzed if, um, we try to do everything at once, right? So this is a really great starting point to get your digital presence, um, you know, streamlined and looking good and acting right and all the rest of it. Um, and then you can sort of simultaneously, uh, well, not simultaneously, do that first and then start stepping into those next um, phases. Because yeah, we, no. our time is limited, right? I mean, you know, and again, a lot of small business owners who are wearing a million hats and all the rest of it. Oh, I did. I just saw a question pop up that I think. Sure, but, Sa but, but but Sarah hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, definitely take it in phases. You know, you do. You, everyone on the on this call is going to get the Google or the Facebook optimization package is fine. So that will take off your hands. You 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 folks are busy. We get it. That's the offer, guys. Make sure um, just take note of that. We're going to be sending out a post workshop email to thank you for participating. It's going to have um, a recording to the workshop if you want to revisit it. Um, and also it's going to have a reminder that you can get in touch with PS Digital and claim your free service that you get for being with us today. So uh, just keep a look in your inbox for that one. Yeah, definitely take advantage of it. Um, you know, it would basically just to kind of wrap this whole thing up, it stems from your logo to your Google map listing, which is your, then comes your convertible website and then comes your reviews. Those are your four fundamentals. Google ads is a little bit, once those items are cared for, then you could start tackling Google ads and start driving traffic to that convertible website. We had a question, um, how much should we spend on ads to start with, which I know is definitely a uh, um, multifaceted answer. So I'll let you take that one. <laughs> sure, it completely depends on the serve. It depends on how many services you want to be found for. It depends on how many areas you want to be found in. Um, so that's basically derived on your, depends on the industry you're in. I mean, lawyers are north of 30, successful companies, 30, $40 a click expediting companies or maybe a dollar a click. 
pizzerias are probably south of a dollar. So it really depends on the industry, the services you want to promote, and the areas you want to promote yourself in. Everything's customizable on that. But before you do Google Ads, make sure that website is convertible. Don't waste and don't do any smart campaigns. Do the expert mode. Um, I was going to be a beast. <laughs> say again, Sarah. No, I just said that that can be a beast. You know, that's a full time job in and of itself. Sometimes managing the Google Ads, right? That's why people hire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I I love Google Ads. That's we design campaigns, we manage, we tweak, we um, we do it all. But I was just going to mention too. I don't know, Sarah. I know it's six oh one. I just wanted to. I like to kind of, you know, if anyone has any questions, I'll hang out as long as possible. But I just wanted to take this time to thank you for your time. If you do want to, and here goes my plug about a review, if you want to share your experience that you had, if you found this valuable, feel free to share your experience with a, with a review on our Google My Business page for PSH. If, not <laughs> if, but the Bronx Chamber, I would recommend going to their Google Map listing and sharing your experience with others so they could find the value in the Bronx Chamber. And this is very welcome. <laughs> and this is um, this is my contact information. And like Sarah said, Sarah, the Bronx are going to send you a follow up email, and we'll take care of the uh, the the complimentary optimization packages, which is which is I'm looking forward to helping you guys. You know, that's that's Emily and I. That's what we do. Um, hopefully, there's not too much hair on some of them. Sometimes it could get a little, depending on anyway. Hopefully it's nice and smooth. We'll have a good time and we'll get that in order for you. We'll take that off your plate. That's great. Brian, thank you so much, Emily. Um, you know, the team at PS Digital is really excellent. Um, I can wholeheartedly um, recommend them, you know, to check them out. You can talk with them for free and get your Google optimization, um, your Google My Business page optimization. And if you're interested in ads, again, that's a whole other beast. You can talk to them about that. Um, but again, all those other pieces in between, they, they do it all. Um, and I say this, uh, again, not just as a co-host, and we are very grateful that they uh, have done this workshop with us, but also because they do provide services for us at the Chamber. So I can say it with full confidence. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. Okay. Thank you all for joining us today. It's really been uh, great to get a really nice roundup. I know everybody is busy and especially this is the time we all want to get ready for dinner. <laughs> or is that just me? I'm sorry, I'm starving. No, no, uh, <laughs> I'm hungry too. I'm hungry too. Two little tidbits for the holidays. Keep in mind the holidays are coming up, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and then boom, December. YouTube channel, get your YouTube channel your business YouTube channel branded up and running, Apple Maps, claim your Apple Maps listing. People are on their phone looking up if you're brick and mortar, boom, that's something you want to take advantage of. It goes a couple of links there too. We'll send that in the email as well. Yep. Great, and I will be sending the recording as part of that follow-up. So uh, I did mention that, right? Okay, good, just wanna make sure. <laughs> cool. All right, well, thank you so much everyone for joining us. You'll be hearing from us and uh, have a wonderful rest of the evening and we hope to connect with you soon at an upcoming Bronx Chamber event. Quick plug, um, we are having a networking mixer, which is a really great way to, you know, join with the Chamber's current members and hear more about membership or just, you know, see what we're about and have a drink with us. That's on October 27th. Um, so we'll be sending out an email about that. Um, and we have a bunch of other great things coming up too. So we hope you'll, uh, Stay on top of your inbox and join us in the future. Thank you so much, everybody. All right, last call. Any questions, comments? All right. Thanks, Sarah. Well, my pleasure. Thank you all. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see you soon, virtually or in person. Bye-bye. <laughs> all right, bye-bye, everybody.